taking a bit of time to set up your editor specifically for you will save you time and energy as a developer down the road. In this video, I'll show you my must have configurations and shortcuts for Visual Studio Code. First off, if you're new to the channel, my name is James Q. Quick, and I create weekly videos on web development. I also spend a lot of time talking about VS Code. This is my favorite editor. It's what I use every day for doing web development, JavaScript, React, all that sort of stuff. So I've created a bunch of videos around VS Code. And if you wanna learn how to put it all together, learn everything that I know about VS Code, I've got a course on Udemy that you can go and check out. I'll have a link below to that. But you're here specifically, hopefully, because you wanna know what I care about most in terms of my configurations and settings. So one of the first questions that I always get from people, they see my videos, they see the look and feel of the editor, they look at the font, and they wanna know what theme and what font I'm using. And I've covered this in a few different videos, but I am using the Cobalt 2 theme by Wes Boss. Cobalt 2 West Bo or Cobalt 2 theme official by Wes Boss. That's where I get all of these covers from, or covers, colors from. I get the yellow color here. I get these cool blues. Uh, it works really well. People seem to love it. People are asking about this all the time. Now, another thing that I have set up is in my built-in terminal down here, lots of people ask me questions about how I got that set up. So I use Hyper as my terminal with ZSH as the shell. And I followed the command line power user course from Westboss to figure out how to set all this up. So by following that tutorial for him, I'll include a link below. You can get the same exact look and feel as what I have here, and then you won't be missing out and you won't have to ask me in the future, how did I get this magical looking setup? It also does something really cool, which is if I uh, make a change in one of my files and then do a git status, uh, next time it renders this bar, it shows me that this is yellow, which means I've changed something. That is super useful. So I love that configuration, command line power user by Wes Boss. Now, in addition to the theme, I'm also using the Cascadia Code font. I've talked about this in a couple of videos. Cascadia Code right now is the font that I'm using and I love it so much. It's free, so you can go and search for Cascadia Code. I also uh, used to use the Fira Code font. It's also free, so you can go and check out either one of those, try them out, see which one you like. If you have other ones that you prefer, feel free to throw those and share those in the chat or in the comments below. Also, I have turned on font ligatures. Now people go back and forth on whether or not they like font ligatures for readability, especially for people who are familiar to them. They might be a little confused as to what's happening, but I have font ligatures turned on, which means that I get these special characters here. If I did something like a triple equals, notice this becomes this three bar thing or the double equals becomes two connected bars. I just think those are super cool and super fun. So to show you really quickly where I have this stuff set up, if I search for font in here, Cascadia code is my font. I have font ligatures turned on. You can go into the settings.json to turn that on. And then my theme, if I look at my theme, preferences color theme, it's set to Cobalt 2. So this is an extension that you installed and then you go ahead and uh, select it inside of your command palette as your theme that you wanna use. All right, now let's talk about something really important. For all the settings and configurations that you put into VS Code, the question becomes, how do you replicate that on different instances of VS Code? So for example, I'm on my uh, personal computer here. I also have a work computer. I also have a backup computer if I needed it. How can I make sure that all the customization and time that I put into customizing and configuring VS Code works on other machines? Well, there's two ways how. There is an extension called the Settings Sync extension. And what this thing will do is it will save your settings into a gist in GitHub. And you can sync that setting sync. You can sync that across all of your different instances of VS Code. This works really great. It's really nice. It's super popular, obviously. I used that for a long time until I realized or found out that VS Code has settings actually built in or synchronized settings. So let me search for uh, setting sync, which is built into VS Code. Notice I don't have, actually I do have this. Uh, I do still have setting sync installed just in case, but um, let's search for the setting sync show sync data. And this will show you all the things that VS Code has taken care of sync synchronizing for me. So UI state, my settings, uh, keyboard shortcuts, extensions, it's synchronizing all of those things. And you can see in real time what different machines are connected to this. Uh, if I had this connected to other machines, you would see those listed here. So never want to lose out on any of your settings when you go to a new computer. Use the built-in setting sync or the setting sync extension if you want to, to make sure you always have the configurations and settings, the must-have stuff for you on any computer that you're on. 
All right, let's talk about a few different shortcuts that are actually really important to me. And these may seem simple, but again, I'm giving you my things that are important to me. So one of the things I found interesting is to do a command F on Mac or control F on Windows, I can do a find. So I could search for data and then I could press enter to go through all the instances of data. And then you can drop down and do a replace. So if I wanted to call this data one, I could do this and I could do command enter and that would replace all of them. But I wanted a shortcut that would let me select whatever I wanna search for and then automatically take me to this replace field. And if you look in the VS Code shortcuts, it was Command F to find, this is on Mac, and then uh, the Alt Command F to replace, but the global search and replace is Command Shift F and Command Shift H. So see how Command Shift H gives me this uh, replace window here? So I wanted that to seem a little bit more streamlined. So for me, this is really important, a small thing, but I set up a shortcut Let's look at my shortcuts in here. And if you look at my replace action, I set it to command H. So this way inside of a file, I can do command F for find or command H for replace. And then I just add the shift moderator or modifier to be able to do those things globally. So command shift F and command shift H to do those globally. This is just how I think. Now I think this may not specifically be something you need, but you should think about what makes the most sense for you. Now, another thing I did, is if, I, uh, if I'm working inside of my editor, I can control tabs to go through different files. I can command W or control uh, W on Windows to close a tab. So if I do command W there, it closes that tab, but it didn't work that way inside of the terminal because I wanna be able to create new instances of my terminal, get rid of delete instances of my terminal, and then toggle between them just like I would up here, but it didn't work that way out of the box. So what I did, is I went into my key bindings and just to show you all of these, when the terminal is focused, let's look at all of these commands. When I'm focused on the terminal, so when I'm working down here, I change some of my shortcuts to work the way that I would expect. So shortcuts that work now, command N will create a new instance. So notice that created a new instance of my terminal, just the same way as I would have done it up here inside of my regular editor. And then control tab will let me toggle back and forth between these two, the same way that I do it up here, right? The only difference is now I'm actually working in the editor and then command W is set up to be able to close the tab now. So now there's only one tab, I can't toggle through any, but I can command N to create a new one, command N to create another new one, and then tab between all three of those. I can't tell you how much I use this. It gives me the exact same workflow that I would have used inside of my editor above. Now I get to do it inside of my terminals and I'd never have to come off of my keyboard to come to my mouse and click delete or plus, or to hit the drop down to switch. I can just use the shortcuts that I'm already used to right here inside of VS Code. Another one that I have set up for myself is, let's search for a new file. There's an extension called the new file extension. And what it does is it allows me to use, uh, set up this command where I can do command N for a new window and it will ask me what directory I want to put this in so I can choose root and then I can do test.js. This is so much easier for me than coming over to uh, to this over here to the finder, creating new file, typing in the name, that sort of stuff. So having a shortcut to be able to do this is really nice. But the thing I had to change was that's not the built in shortcut. So I had to override the built in command in shortcut on VS Code to be able to trigger this thing. And I also wanted this to only work when I wasn't inside of the terminal, because if you remember, I had those other shortcuts set up for command N to create a new terminal window if I am in the terminal. So this is where you can get really creative with your win conditions to make sure that you have ultimate customizability, ultimate control over what these things do and when. Now, the other thing I've done is I've installed not only the advanced new file extension, so you can see that one here, not only do I have that, but I also have the file utils extension installed. And one of the neat things that this allows me to do is inside of a file, I can do my command palette and type in rename and you see file re file utils rename and I could rename this to test.js or test2.js. And again, not having to come over to my finder, not having to click on buttons over here, I can do it all from my keyboard, which trust me as a developer is what you wanna do is stay on that keyboard. All right, the next couple of settings I have are the format on save setting, and this will automatically format my code every time I save a file. That might've been already what you were expecting, hopefully. And what this means is if I, if I start messing this stuff up, just formatting wise, 
and uh, put a couple of extra returns in here, a couple of extra tabs and stuff. When I save, VS Code is automatically gonna format that stuff for me. Now it's not 100% perfect all of the time, but it's 98% perfect <laughs> all of the time. And it works for almost every single use case that I would want. Sometimes it formats it slightly different than I would have personally, but I don't have to worry about it. I let VS Code take care of it. So I always keep the format on save setting on, and I have the prettier extension to be able to format that stuff for me. All right, a couple of settings I think are, a couple of additional settings that I think are fun. One is the ruler setting. And what this will do is allow you to define, let's see, I guess I have to go into uh, the JSON file here. And that got a little bit formatted oddly. That should be over here. So our rulers, you can define basically a line inside of your editor to show you how far over you are. So this is set to 80, which means inside of my file. Now you can see this line, it's pretty faint, but hopefully you can see it. That line right there shows me where 80 characters is. And that's usually a good uh, estimation about how long uh, or the max amount of characters a given line should be when you're writing code. So if I hit that line, I knew I know that I probably want to bring something down to the next line to make it a little more readable. So inside of that settings JSON, you can set uh, 80 and uh, let's see if I set 80, 90, 100, then this will give me three that I can see. So you can see those there. And I love VS Code that when you change these settings, these take place almost real time. Uh, which is my favorite thing about VS Code is the customizability, but how easy it is to then see those changes take place. Now, another thing that I really love in here is I've customized the window title. And the window title is this thing up here. And if you look in your settings, this will actually give you some information about the window title. And here are all of the different variables that you can use inside of your window title. So what I've decided to do is to have the active editor medium. And what this does is it shows me the directory of the file I'm in. And this is actually not only useful for the files of my project that I'm working on, see source pages index, I can see exactly where that thing is, but also for things like my settings.json file, I don't have a need necessarily to go out and grab this on my computer, unless I wanted to just wipe it out for some, some reason. But with this setting set for my window title, I can see exactly where that thing is by displaying that path and there's obviously other things that you can do. You can look at all of these variables, but having that at a glance is a really nice thing to be able to see in my window title. I think one more down here that's really nice is the search exclude. And here you can type in directories that you don't want to search in. So if I do a command shift F and I do a global search, I almost never and never want to search in my node modules directory, probably the same for you. So I go ahead and ignore node modules, I ignore Bower components to make sure I never get results that pop up from those. I'm only searching stuff that's actually in the code that I've written. All right, two more that I wanna show you. One is the VS Code icons extension. And I realized I had had this turned off for a bit, but these are icons that go with your files and actually make them really neat. You can see the transformation here in a second in this demo. So now you see all these files. So what this looks like is with this set up, now I have all these icons associated with the different files that I have. So you can see there's Gatsby icons for that one, prettier icons for those prettier uh, config. Netlify has an icon, NPM, README, JavaScript, SAS, uh, just JS in general folders, all that stuff has its own icon. Makes it easier for me to tell what type of file something is by seeing that icon. And to be honest, it just looks cool. All right, the very last thing I wanna show you is, I haven't decided if I'm going to stick with this yet, but for your sidebar, this thing over here, you can decide whether or not you want it to be on the left or the right. Now, I think I'm gonna try this out on the right. And the reason is when I toggle open my sidebar or closed, notice that my code stays exactly where it is. So since the code is on the left and the left isn't moving, the code stays exactly where it is versus if I did this back on the left and I toggle open, that sidebar, now the code is actually moving, not exactly what I want. So this is a really interesting one. Some people swear by this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on for myself, have this on the right, and now when I toggle this on and off, that stuff will stay the same, at least for my code, and not move, and I know exactly where my code is. I don't have to move around and try to find it uh, as it moves around. So those are my must-have VS Code configurations and shortcuts. These may seem small, but these are the things that really make my workflow in VS Code really special and unique for me to help me be as productive as I possibly can. So I'm curious if you think I missed anything, what are your favorite configurations, your favorite shortcuts, your favorite extensions? Throw them down below in the comments. I would love to hear what you think. 
as always, thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoy VS Code. If you enjoyed the video, like it, give a subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you come back and watch more videos in the future. And in the meantime, I'll see you later.